A year and a half ago, I started reading House of Leaves. Recently, I actually ended up finishing this book. And while it has been covered to death over the years, there is one aspect to this book that makes this story even more haunting once it's realized. It's ultimately a story of how one man's obsession destroyed his entire family. Obviously, this will be a very spoiler heavy discussion. So there's your spoiler warning. So this is the remastered full color edition. Now, what does that mean? Well, there are actually apparently four different editions of this very book. There's the incomplete version of the book. There's the black and white version, the two color version, and then this full color version. Incomplete has no color and no braille. And in the black and white version, there are no red words either. In the two color version, the word house appears in blue and some other words appear in red. But this full color version includes this. The word house in blue, minotaur, and all struck passages in red. The only struck line in chapter 11 appears in purple, and there are actual color plates. Now in this version, there are also some pictures which are also in color, so if you want to read this book, I definitely recommend the remastered full color edition for the full experience. This book is also very different when it comes to fiction. You think that it's just about one thing. Oh no, we're going to get into that. It's, it's about a lot of different things, right? So as you can see by the table of contents, there's the foreword, the introduction, the Novitson record, which is most of this book, which is the best part of the book in my opinion. There is Exhibits 1, which is 6. There is the appendix by Zimpano, Zimpano, who has six chapters. We have another appendix, which is Johnny Trout, and that's six chapters. Then we have a third appendix, which is some evidence, some contrary evidence. Index credits, and I don't... Yagdrasil? I don't know what that means. And the reason why I mentioned all that is because this book is about three layers deep, okay? Inside this book is the Novitzen Record, which is a documentary about a house that has a little crack in it that keeps getting bigger and bigger and people wanted to explore it, right? So that's the Novitzen record, but that's the documentary. So then this book is a few people trying to dissect the documentary and trying to figure out if it's real or not in this fictional world, if that makes sense. And then on top of that, you have the editors of this book. There is Zampano, Zampano, I don't know how to say his name, but he's like the older guy in the book. And then Johnny Trout is the younger guy in the book. And the older guy is retired and he's kind of obsessed with this whole situation. But the obsession that we're talking about is not necessarily with him, it's with the main character of the story. So Zampano is this older retired guy. And Johnny is this younger guy who's this like lovesick obsessed person who's obsessed with this very specific girl at this tattoo parlor he works at. Either she works there or she visits every once in a while. That doesn't really matter either way. The reason it's this thick is because the editors like to include their own experiences. Not even about the Navitzen record, by the way, but about their own experiences. And that was one of the reasons it was kind of frustrating to read this book as an editor. <laughs> because instead of taking stuff out, they will just add more stuff and they will add stuff that has literally nothing to do with the Navitzen record, which is kind of the whole point of this book. So it's a very frustrating read from that aspect, but not in a bad way. At a certain point, you kind of just expect the insanity that is this book, especially because it is a multi-genre. It's horror, it's romance. In some senses, it's comedy, and that comedy is mostly derived from the editors, not necessarily the Novitzen record itself. With this book, you're basically getting like three different books in one because you got the Novitzen record, which is a documentary, which is the main character of the story. Then you have the two separate editors and their story and their storylines, and it all kind of combines into this one thing. You can usually tell based on the font, which are the editors, which are the Novitzen record, and which are the materials that they're working with to try to solve if the Novitzen record was real or fiction. And it kind of like jumps between all of those. But this whole book is really interesting because it kind of talks about the concept of like media literacy and how people dissect certain works of art and media and literature and stuff like that which is kind of interesting this book makes it feel like that there are multiple authors even though it's just mark writing this and he does a very good job at personifying these individual characters to make them feel real and to make it feel like there are actual people that have worked on dissecting the Novitzen record because like i said this has multiple layers right so you have the Novitzen record which is the documentary we have the editors dissecting the Novitzen record and all of that accumulates into this book i had to talk about that to talk about like the true 
base layer of this whole thing and it's the documentary the fake documentary the real documentary that people think is fake but it's real in the story but it's not real because this is a fictional book. Anyway, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this book specifically is the fact of the main character, Nobitz. He is a person that is extremely obsessive when it comes to this house and this crack in this wall. So it's just a normal day. He's looking at this one room and he's like, well, that's weird. Why is there a crack? Here? And over time, this crack just becomes a little bit bigger to the point where you can actually walk through it. And once this starts, Nobitzen becomes extremely obsessed with this crack in this wall. And where does it go? Why is it here? Why, why is it bigger on the inside than it is the outside? TARDIS? Doctor Who? It was kind of interesting as an artist myself, as a creator myself, seeing somebody else be obsessed with essentially their own creative work of art both from an author perspective and also from a character perspective especially because with the editors of this book they kind of just go off the rails as well with this whole project so in a way everybody's kind of obsessing over this one thing why because they just they need to know if it's real or not if it's fiction or not and i didn't really realize that but yeah it seems like every character every main character so the main character and the two editors are kind of like obsessed with this whole thing to the point where it kind of drives them mad but the character the main character stood out to me the most when it comes to this specific obsessive concept so yeah the main character is obsessed with this crack in the wall he goes in it and he, it's it's this weird kind of experience that he has it's not normal it's very non-euclidean which we talked about earlier in earlier videos and i also mentioned this book in that video because there are just certain concepts where spaces don't make sense in this area it seems like its own plane of existence in a way and he just can't wrap his head around it so eventually he's like yo hey friends let's go back into this place right and while all this is going on his wife feels neglected his family feels neglected the wife and kids eventually leave the house because they realize that this man is more loving and obsessed with this project than he is with his own family and i'm pretty sure they get a divorce but i'm not entirely sure i don't remember and this kind of comes to a head when one of his friends are lost or dies in this little space while they are exploring and when they come back and somebody's missing they try to go back to look for him and they find him but he's dead there are definitely casualties with going into this confined space although it doesn't feel very confined once you get into it and see this weird impossible staircase again one of those non-euclidean concepts but it eventually gets to a point in the story where his friends left him, his family left him, nobody wants to help him out, and he is kind of this madman in this house by himself, where his obsession has kind of led him to a brink of insanity because all he can think about is this house. All of his thoughts just keep gravitating towards this house and this crack in this wall, and he, do he still doesn't understand what's going on, and he just needs to find out what is happening. To the point where, for the last time he goes in, and he's lost to the darkness forever. And man, this book is extremely haunting once you realize that it is about a man's obsession to the brink of insanity to the point where he loses literally everything, his family, his friends, his job, everything is gone because he just couldn't stop thinking and caring about this house and this, and this crack and this wall. And he just needed to know what lies in it. Was there a monster? Maybe, maybe not. Was he just delusional this entire time? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? And that's kind of the epitome of this whole book is kind of trying to figure out if it's real or not. But because of that, it kind of just leads not only the main character the, to the brink of insanity, but the editors as well. And it kind of is a cautionary tale of, hey, have some work-life balance. You know, it's kind of interesting how this whole thing kind of brings up the whole workaholic kind of concept, which I'm not a huge fan of. I, I was suffering from that for a long time. And I realized that, oh, you know, I need friends, I need family. I can't just sit alone in my office every single day and work on stuff like this. I need to do other things. You know, I need to go out of the house. I need to take care of my dog. You know, stuff like that. And if you're just obsessing about your art, then are you really living? There's more to life than just art. There's more to life than just work. 
but I do think there definitely needs to be a balance. And this book is like, what if we didn't have that balance? What if we just focused on this one hyper specific thing until we literally die? And I think that concept really stood out to me it was as a cautionary tale of, oh, I really need to be cautious about my time and how I'm spending my time. And I really need to be cautious about not becoming obsessed to the point of death with creativity. And I thought that was kind of an interesting concept that I personally came away with, with this book. 